for a common purpose. Save Heinz Park basically popped out of the usual suspects trying to save the Warren Valley Golf Course. Who here knows something about the Warren Valley Golf Course controversy? Of course, that wasn't the first time Wayne County came after Parkland. I wanted to mention and recognize a couple people here. Where's Jack Smiley and John Covert? John Covert is right over there. Jack Smiley is hiding over there. I'm proud to wear this shirt right here. That was an attempt of Wayne County to cut down a nature preserve to make a golf course. And people like this crowd over here and much more gathered and said that was not a good idea. We picketed city halls. We sent in those letters and they didn't have emails then, I don't think. I don't think so. But we did the same thing we're doing right now, trying to influence a county executive and administration that is willing to sacrifice parkland for some pennies of tax base and take care of some friends. I'm going to try not to get too passionate and call too many names out here, but I just wanted to recognize here, coalitions usually break up upon victory or failure. Warren Valley Golf Course, to some people, like me, was a failure because we didn't save the parkland. It was a victory because Dearborn Heights, the citizens of Dearborn Heights, stepped up and saved it as a golf course by putting their tax money into it and keeping it in the environment and in the recreation. So I wanted to thank Diane Webb and people in her. That was, okay. Anyway, after that, we went into uh, sleep mode. This is tech talk. I don't really know what it means. Sleep mode, pause, or whatever it is. And then, and then what happens is the for sale signs go up on the mills. For sale signs go up on the mills, okay. Eh, okay, what is going on? And then there's a rezoning sign at Phoenix. A rezoning sign. Nancy and I go to the rezoning board, commission, whatever who that was, planning commission was taking care of rezoning. Two people there, two people there. Well, me and Nancy, they wondered what we were. The owner, the guy that was buying Phoenix. Nice guy, nice vision, nice project. You can understand why the township really wanted that. But the backstory on that one is that is parkland that disappeared. It's now in private ownership. Hmm. Okay, that's a slippery slope. Well, some of those usual suspects are of uh, Save Heinz Parker here today. Nancy, of course. Yes. Me, Sally. Sally. There's a, there's a not, who is the core group of Save Heinz Park? Fred? Yes? There's, there's, it starts out with a core of people and say, how are we going to get, how are we going to get the message out there? We're going to get, start with emails, start with letters. Uh, they have this new thing, social media. My daughter helps me out with that. I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> right? Obviously, it must have worked. You're here today. Save Heinz Park, that, that coalition has already succeeded in its number one mission. And our number one mission is raise the red flag, people. We are Paul Revere. The county is coming. It's time to stand at Newburgh Point and Newburgh Mill and fight this darn thing. So that's starting one. <laughs> What I'm going to do right now is tell you the facts of what we know, and then Michael Rodell is going to talk about what's at stake, and then we are going to uh, open it up for questions 
And then we're gonna close it with what steps we can take from this point on. So bear with me because I'm as technically skilled as, as uh, Bill is. What is that name? You gotta take this one out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. What I want you to know is that we are not opposed to redeveloping the mills. We welcome it. In fact, in 1989, we did a Master Rouge Parkway improvement project in which we actually recommended adaptive reuse of the mills. What we oppose is selling them in full. We would uh, welcome an active partnership project at one time, I was dealing with the Plymouth Art Center. This is not, this is a free propaganda zone. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we had, uh, we were working with the Plymouth Art Council to actually uh, adaptively reuse Wilcox. They had $400,000, but we discovered there were, the sewer wasn't hooked up. It didn't have water. It needed an elevator and the price got astronomical. They ended up buying a house on Sheldon Road. I share the story for you because I, I want you to understand it is possible to redevelop these mills without outright selling them. We also had an inquiry by the Friends of the Rouge to use Plymouth, uh, Plymouth Mill, Phoenix Mill, and they were told that it was too late um, to come up with it. So we are showing you this to show that we are not anti-development. In fact, it's quite the reversal. We're pro-development pro-development of recreational assets in this park. I want you to know that, that when this system was designed, we did not have a millage. And yet we raised a million and a half dollars to renovate Nankin Mills to a nationally award standard and have hundreds of thousands of kids come in that facility up to today. <coughs> yeah. I want you to know that we raised over a million and a half dollars for Newburgh point the rest of the comfort station to do a walk and fishing and everything there with no millage money. The fact is that $247 million have been raised with the park millage since 1996. My question is, what was that money used for that these mills are in the shape that they are in? to be negative though. I know from painful experience the park system deals with a lot of issues. But the bottom line is that when Henry Ford, Butler, Haggerty, and Hines sat at that table and said, let's protect the floodway along the Rouge River, along the Huron River, and along the Detroit River, they were thinking big. They were thinking monumental. They weren't thinking about what's possible. They weren't talking about, we don't have money to do this. Oh, it costs a lot to fix these mills. They were thinking, what's possible? Who would come and join us to redevelop these? What kind of funds could we bring from the outside? If our team, my design team, could raise a million and a half dollars with no match monies, by leveraging a foundation against a grant and a grant against a grant and then private donations. What could we do with that millage money? Not only just with the mills, but also with the rest of the park system. It's an exciting thought and we should be proactive in that. Help me. These are some of the amenities that we want, wanted to create. Newport Point got created. Nakin Mills got created. This is possible at Wilcox. I'm not sure a private developer can do it though. Do we want the floodway in control of private people? No. <laughs> I don't know. I think some of them are capable of taking care of it, but I don't want to bet on it. This is the 
this is why I'm here. I'm here because there's 11 acres for sale. Bill, will you point for it? It's called Parcel B. It's presently up for sale by Wayne County Economic Development to put housing in. Where is it, please? That's Wilcox. Wilcox. Yeah. Now, a really nice man's trying to buy Wilcox Mill to make a uh, art, art center, right? And we have no we have no qualms with what he's doing. The poor guy got caught in the middle of this. What we have a qualms with is the acreage they're selling with it for housing. The man who bought Phoenix Mill is wonderful. I've worked with him on the restoration of the Ford Valve plant, but that was a joint partnership where he gave the city all the land around it to be a park, and he raised, he raised the capital to change the building. The city raised the capital to clean the site, they maintain the site, they monitor the environmental permits, they allow fishing, and we take care of everything. 